Number seven, how will carbon nanotubes change my life? Well, I don't, Jose London, I don't know how old you are, but um, they're not going to change it a, a lot at the moment. Um, I, I think, I may be wrong, <laughs> invariably I'm wrong, and one thing you learn about science is that you are wrong a lot of the time. Um, but um, I think the first applications of nanotubes will probably be in composite materials where control of size and structure will not be quite so important. But for the paradigm shifting applications that we know are possible, whether they're probable I don't know, I think we'll have to have a very close control of structure. Um, now I don't know that we have that, but I'm, one or two of my friends say they, they've got some breakthroughs. If you've got very good control of structure and they're all the same, then you get a coordinated um, effect. Um, imagine you have a bunch of straws in a box and you open the box up and you see that hexagonal packing of the ends of the straw. And you put very, very weak glue on the, each straw, then you, you stick them all carefully together. You have an incredibly strong material. Not only that, what um, really restricts the application of many materials are defects. Now, if you have a defect in one straw, one straw is you know, a little bit torn, it won't propagate to the next uh, straw. And that's a magic property of this material at the molecular level. I have trees have that. I mean, the tree is striated. I mean, they're, they're weak this way, but they're very strong that way. So we should be able to make perhaps the most amazing material ever made if we can control the synthesis of carbon nanotubes very closely and make them very long. At the moment we can make a bundle of a hundred, maybe um, a few microns long, but we need to make them yards long and in bundles of 10 to the 15. That's a, a say, what is 10, 10 to 15, a hundred, a thousand million, million, something like this in a bundle. And they will have van der Waals forces holding them together. So that could be um, a, a massive breakthrough and that would change our lives because we'd be able to build bridges so so strong they won't fall down in earthquakes and um, uh, airplanes so light that they won't uh, they glide if the engines fail. Um, we could probably make a car that um, when you crash it won't break up. It would be so strong and light and uh, that would be good especially as you come into actually you could you could Take this car and be so light that when you come to a crossing, um, you wouldn't need red lights because you'd be radio controlled and they would go down and you'd go over the top. And if you hit, they'd be like the bumper cars at the, at the fair. That'd be good. And that would change your life. Just imagine it. No red lights at intersections. I think that would be well worth it. Uh, so uh, the other possibility is that if we can solve the molecular electronics problem, that nanotubes could well be uh, the linkers are the current conductors in molecular electronics and that would be good. Again that requires chemical synthetic breakthroughs, we're some way off that. And of course if we can really solve the problem of making cables with nanotubes the, this would be fantastically effective for electrical conduction on a massive scale. It's not a superconducting but it would be zero let loss conduction. So there are possibilities, but before that happens, I think there really will have to be some big, big chemistry technology breakthroughs.